This video is brought to you by NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com slash bhlhudson or use code bhlhudson to get a two-year plan with 73% off, plus four months for free. Well, <laughs> what an episode. What a weird, yet kind of wonderful episode. Loki episode five just came out, I watched it first thing, and now I'm recording this immediately afterwards for my first impression right off the top of my head thoughts. So, with full spoilers for this episode, let's talk about what happened in this episode, all the crazy easter eggs and fun stuff, what this means for the characters, what the finale is gonna be, let's talk about all of it. Firstly, if you've been watching these Loki reviews that I've been doing, you probably get that I enjoy the weird, kinda goofy sci-fi side of this. I enjoy when it leans into that crazy, strange, time travel, different dimensions, all of that kinda stuff. So you can probably imagine I very much enjoyed this episode, because this is the most that of the show so far. This one is mostly set in the Void, aka this end of time purgatory world where stuff from all across time has been dumped, including tons of Lokis. And so that was a lot of fun for a few reasons. One, just seeing all the different Lokis and especially them interacting was a lot of fun. I mean, one, you can see what would have happened in the MCU if different things happened for this Loki, like if he took a different path at certain points. And two, it plays into that fun that we've sort of gotten with Sylvie and Loki already of two of the same character interacting with each other, like how they're just talking about how knives are awesome. And also all of them, of course, betraying each other. It's quite funny, again, to play into that character's cliches. Also, yeah, President Loki is just there for a second. That was kind of not exactly a misdirect in the trailer, but it was fine. It worked here, and it wasn't even our Loki. But yeah, it worked really well in this episode. I also found very funny at the start Loki's general exasperation with the situation, where he's kind of like, I've been through so much weird sh** these past few days. Like, come on, what? <laughs> Why is there an alligator? And generally, just a very funny episode. Maybe the funniest so far. It made me laugh out loud quite a few times. Just super goofy and funny in, in a great way. It was fun to see Richard E. Grant pop up. I love his classic Loki costume. They've done a lot of this, like, using the comic's first design that's quite goofy in sort of a joking way. Like, we had Wanda uh, having, like, that classic Scarlet Witch costume in WandaVision just as, like, a Halloween costume, and pretty sure Luke Cage did that as well at some point. But it was fun to see it fit the tone of this show and this episode perfectly. And also, I really just like the concept of the Void in general, both from an MCU perspective, and then also just having different things across time crashing in here. It's kind of like a time version of Sakaar. Like, it's just populated with, you see, a pyramid in the background, and the Sphinx, and all this different stuff. It's such a fun concept for a fantasy crazy show. And we'll get to all the easter eggs later, don't worry. We get more development of that theme of breaking your destiny, and not having to follow just being a sad loser villain who barely has to scrape by, and gets betrayed, and loses, and all this stuff. With the Lokis realizing that they basically got sent to, I mean, I guess not hell, but to purgatory, just for trying to make their lives better, or change their fate. And yeah, I hope we don't get a moment, again, Percy Jackson-esque, where at the end he's literally like, I choose my own destiny, but I think we'll get some kind of line like that, as we already have gotten a few of like, I don't have to fit into this mold. You know, they're laying it on a little thick, I guess, but it's, it's fine, it's good. And I do think it's been built in a pretty satisfying way. Owen Wilson's back, as you know, we all, I mean, not even predicted, it was basically confirmed the fact that Loki was alive, that Owen Wilson would be alive. But it's great to see Mobius again, him and Sylvia are actually pretty fun together. And the Mobius and Loki hug, you know, was very sweet, made me smile. Nice. Made me happy, made me smile, nice. Fun, cute, and it's believable that they would be friends by now. And speaking of which, you believe Loki's change in character because of how it's been done throughout the show. You actually believe that the guy at the end of the Avengers could turn into this version of Loki because of how well it's been done, which I appreciate. When he says, like, I'm not that Loki anymore, or whatever, I believed it. Also on the story, the show, I think, has done a really good job of having you intrigued in this mystery and having enough questions, you know, put in throughout and then some of them answered and some of them not, and it develops to have me really intrigued to see how this is gonna wrap up in the last episode. I think it's actually done that better than WandaVision, personally, because that had a great mystery and then it kind of just gave it away pretty fast. And there wasn't as much interesting intrigue where I feel like this one has done it, I guess in a, I guess it's a different structure, so it's not really fair to say it's better, but I think it's worked really well for this show that it's slowly revealed and we still don't know who's behind it, although it's probably Kang. Is it, is it Kang? It's, it's probably Kang. But I'm genuinely hooked. I'm very curious to see where this is gonna go. Quick reminder here that if you're enjoying this video, drop a like, subscribe, and comment your thoughts on this episode down below. Also, the evil TVA woman, I, who I guess isn't 100% evil, she's also curious of how her world has been turned upside down, but you know, she's pretty bad. She's pretty good at being like a hateable villain, like I'm rooting against her. She gives a good performance. Uh, real quick, in terms of the negatives for this episode, I really enjoyed it. Uh, I, I enjoyed how much, like, it swung for the fences, you know, it didn't play it safe or anything. But I do still have a few negatives. 
that cliche joke of someone giving a rousing speech and the music is building and they're being very genuine and kind of chewing the scenery, overacting a bit, and then there's a beat and then everyone around them laughs. It's been done so many times. I feel like it's even been done in this show already. It's just such a cliche joke and you, it just kind of feels like a waste of time because you know where it's going as soon as it starts. And I just, I kind of wish they would stop doing that. Like sometimes it can be used for a story purpose. Like the first one that comes to mind is in Nobody when he says that, like, I'm going to f*** you up and then they start laughing. Like that makes sense in the story. But here it really just feels like it's meant for a quick, cheap laugh. And it, I don't know. I'm just tired of seeing that <laughs> joke and stuff. Some of this world looks a little green screeny occasionally, but A, it's occasionally, and B, I feel like it sort of adds to the goofy, retro, sci-fi, Doctor Who, Star Trek kind of vibe, so it didn't really bother me. The Loki, Sylvie love story, I get the purpose it serves in the story, and like the character's arc, and I'm not saying that's necessarily bad, although again, a little weird, but my problem really lies with the dialogue and the execution or the acting i don't really know there's something about their like flirting scenes and their kind of romance scenes that's just a bit awkward and kind of weird like they have good chemistry especially when they're having sort of friendship moments having fun moments together but it's just these flirtation scenes just feel kind of uncomfortable i don't know maybe it's because they're the same character but i don't think it is i think it's just the dialogue and the way it's done is just a bit like i don't say cringy but Sometimes it's a little weird. Occasionally some dialogue in this episode felt a bit more stilted and scripted feeling, but there wasn't a lot of that. Generally good dialogue. But yeah, those are really my negatives with this episode. Overall, I really enjoyed it, and I enjoyed it more than some of the previous episodes, despite it probably having more, like, technically wrong with it, or more negatives that I've mentioned. Just because the negatives weren't generally, like, the pacing or the structure or anything. Not that that's been a big problem before, but there were more small things that were overshadowed by the fact that the episode just went for it and went for this fun, goofy, weird thing that I loved, and the vast majority of it was very well executed. Let's talk Easter eggs real quick. Now, I definitely miss some, because, again, these are recorded right after I watch the episode. I watch it, I jot down a few notes, and then I record. So these are just the ones I spotted as the episode was going on my first viewing. I saw the Thanos copter, that was a pretty obvious one. Very fun that they finally included that in the MCU. This was the perfect show to do it in, you know, with the goofy tone. Ronin's ship is there from Guardians of the Galaxy. There's a helicarrier somewhere in the background. I'm pretty sure I saw one of those Hydra spinny things from uh, Captain America. Frog Thor appears, um, which is pretty fun to see here. Also, is the car that Mobius is driving a reference to the Pizza Planet truck in Pixar? Like, is that like meant to be like a live action Pixar thing that was taken from the universe? Probably not. Maybe it's just a reference. Maybe it's not. I don't know. But there were tons of other things that I've definitely missed. Please leave them down below in the comments because it's quite fun to spot these things. And this was the perfect episode for all these Easter eggs. And again, part of the fun of the episode. It's more of a background little detail thing. But it's fun to see all these little details like in the background. I'm going to watch the episode again tonight with family and I'm genuinely looking forward to seeing it again so I can see what else I can spot in the background, you know? But yeah, let me know down below what other ones that I missed. And here at the end, finally, some miscellaneous things to wrap this up. I still love the adventure sci-fi music. It's perfect and grand and it's just great. Classic Loki's massive illusion moment was awesome and him finally finding purpose. Great scene. Uh, and yeah, I'm just very excited to see how it ends. It sets up this cliffhanger ending very well. I genuinely felt at the end of the episode like, damn, I, I really want to know what happens next, which is what a good TV show should do. So very excited for the finale. It's been a fun show. I can get why some people might not love it, maybe because it has been so goofy and it's so much leaned into this like retro kind of sci-fi tone. So I get why that could alienate some people, but I, I absolutely love it. This is, I feel like this was the perfect tone to take for this character and like this kind of show with time travel and all that stuff. So I'm loving it. Yeah, it's not perfect, but I'm thoroughly enjoying it. I'm looking forward to the episodes each week. Can't wait. So those are my thoughts on Loki episode five. What did you think of it? Let me know all of your thoughts down below in the comments. While you're at it, be sure to like this video, check out my Instagram and Twitter at BHL underscore Hudson. Check out this podcast that I do with a friend of mine where we talk about movies, TV shows, a bunch of nonsense. It's called the Poorly Planned Podcast and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.